everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ganny, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the live recording of my sewing and dressmaking question and answer session that I did on Monday, the 6th of February over on the Instagram platform. So I have got lots of questions to answer that have been sent in beforehand. Some of them have been questions from YouTube. So people watching past sessions and leaving comments below. So they've got lots of tips, lots of advice to share, lots of inspiration, fabric and pattern pairing recommendations. So I've got lots of things from all around the shop to show you tonight. I will be answering questions that come in live as well so you'll sort of see me have a little look at the screen um, and just be reading out the comments that are coming in as I chat along but if you're watching here on YouTube and you do want to ask me a question for a future week please feel free to leave a comment in below or you can get in touch with the shop you can email us you can call us as well so I'm gonna switch over to the live recording now I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you soon welcome to this week's live Monday the 6th of Feb we're here already Hope you've all had a nice weekend and are looking forward to an exciting week ahead. I'm just wondering if my light is sort of flickering a little bit there. Um, I hope you can all hear me okay. Let me know if you can see me okay as well. As I said, I'm, I'm like wondering whether my light is flickering a bit. If anybody can see flickering in the screen, let me know and I will try and adjust some kind of light that's shining in my face. Um, so it's really lovely to see you all. I have got some really, really nice things to show you tonight, some new fabrics that have just come in and lots of good questions as well. So I think you're gonna be getting lots of tips and learning new things. Um, and one of the things I really love about answering your questions is that, because I don't always know the answer, um, I have some, I have to go and like look things up, then I get to learn lots of stuff too. So it's all really interesting. Um, okay, good. You can, no flickering. Brilliant. That's what I was worried about. And you can hear me as well. Lovely. Yes, flickering above the window. Yeah, I wonder if it's the light on the chandelier. If it's annoying, I can go and turn it off. Maybe I should go and turn it off if it's annoying. I wonder if a bulb is about to go in the chandelier <laughs> in the bay window. Um, yeah, a few people are saying it's flickering. I'll just, I'll just turn it, unless I maybe, no, you can still see it if I do that. I'll just go and turn it off. I'll be a second. There we go. Then we don't need to worry about it. Um, okay, so it looks like lots of people have joined, which is wonderful. Remember, I will just be sharing it on Instagram and on YouTube as well. So you can always watch back if you can't stay or whatever, or you, you know, you like miss a bit. So I do have some things to show you that have just come back in. And I've got, then I've got questions and lots of fabric and pattern combinations. So yeah, lots of things to get through tonight. I'm going to start off by talking about the kits that were released last week and they were the first ones of this year and they were really, really popular and I'm, I'm sorry, the majority of them have gone. It is honestly really hard to get the right balance between demand um, and capacity to like make them and store them and everything um, but they did sell out pretty quick this time. Um, we do have some of one of them left it is the Helen's Closet Dawson t-shirt. So this is, and it's specifically the gray colorway that we've got left. So this is actually a really versatile pattern. If you don't have like a kind of classic kind of t-shirt, stretchy t-shirt pattern in your sort of repertoire or in your pattern bank, it's a really good one because it's got different necklines. You have a crew neck, which is quite high. You can have a turtle neck and then this is a sort of lower scoop neck. And then there's different sleeve length options as well so it's just you know it's quite a classic sort of more fitted t-shirt obviously you can size up if you didn't want it quite as fitted but what has made this kit really special is the fabric so it's a bamboo jersey fabric but it's a it's a loop back it's a french tidy loop back so it feels a little bit thicker it's nice for this time of year because it's as good as a layering piece you can you know you can wear a t-shirt or a top and just feel like a little bit cozier so it is a really nice fabric now, those of you that maybe got the kit and really like the fabric, want to make more, or if you missed out on the kit, we are hopefully getting more of the fabric soon. So just watch out for that um, coming available online. You can always email us if you do want some of the fabric and then we can let you know when it is available. But yeah, we do still have some of the grey one left if you fancy it. Um, and we also included the stretch fix in it. So that helps you, you, we show you how to do that. That helps you how to do the hems on stretchy garments, which is really nice and quick and easy. And then also the Mariflex thread as well, which means that you can sew jersey garments with straight stitches. Woo. The name of the kit is the Dawson. 
um, as in Dawson's Creek. If anybody's old Dawson Creek fans out there, um, the Dawson and the pattern is Helen's Closet. That's the, the pattern company and it's the Dawson top. Um, so yeah, that is available in the Sewing Society section online, the Just Drive section, you'll see it there. Okay, the next thing I wanted to show you, which I'm like really excited about, is that following on from the Megan Nielsen Hovea kits that we did in December, which are on the mannequins behind me here, which were really popular. We do have a few left, I think, last time I checked, is that we have got other colourways of that fabric in. So when we had it for the kits, it was just the bottle green, the khaki green, and then the cam grey, which was like a sort of darker grey colour. But we have got one, two, three, four, five, six new colours to show you. So we have also got in all of the colours I'm going to show you the matching bias binding as well. So this means that if you're making a garment where you do need bias binding or any sort of trims or you want to finish off the seam allowances inside, then you can get that matching bias binding like this. Um, so I'm going to show you the different colours that we've got now and then suggest some different things that you can make with them. Obviously you can make the Hovea, the Megan Nielsen one, but there are lots of other really lovely patterns that you can make with it as well. So this one here is, the, it's called Indigo, but I would say it's more of like a sort of deeper navy blue colour. So, you know, a bit more of a classic, going to go with lots of things and it is in the diamond design. So it's got these big diamonds on it here. And then this one is the the mustard colorway dry mustard so i would say it's not it's not like a really bright mustard i think it's a really lovely shade of kind of ochre mustard it's really nice and as you can see this is in the vertical striped quilted one and then the next one is this one which is thunder which is like a kind of more sort of lighter muted blue again with the vertical um, quilting on it here so that's the thunder one and then the next one is what, what's this one called rosewood so it is a lovely sort of like muted kind of pinky slightly sort of like a light rust color maybe almost really nice and this is in the kind of larger wave design as well and then this next one is olive, so it's like again quite muted, quite lighter. It's quite nice for spring, these sort of lighter, brighter colours, which is really nice. Again, in the wave pattern, so that's that one. And then the last one, possibly my favourite, is the lilac. But I would say it's quite a pinky lilac, almost like got sort of grey tones to it as well. It's a really lovely shade, really nice. And again, in that sort of vertical um pattern vertical quilted pattern so that's all the different colors there they're not online right now but they will be in the morning so hopefully all being well by the time you check if you check at lunchtime then they should be online there now in terms of what to make with these i've had a little because people have asked me before so i just sort of made up like another little list obviously they're good for jackets so as we said the megan nielsen hovea and then um th these are all patterns that do have but like when you look at the modelled pictures of them, they are made out of quilted fabric. But you can make it to use jackets that aren't necessarily like sampled in that because it's not it's not that thick. Um, so you can have like a facing on it or whatever as well. Yes, we've got binding of all of the colours as well. So the Closet Core Parchment Jacket, which is the new one that was part of like their subscription thing. And then the Fibre Mood Giselle and which is more like a longer one with a zip so it's more like a sort of duvet style coat and then also the fiber mood marcia is another one i'm trying to sorry i'm trying to picture what that is now i should have made notes and then vicky the vicky sews cheryl jacket is another one that is made up in like a quilted fabric as well but other exact other examples of ones where you don't necessarily like see that type of fabric made up in the samples but they would still be suitable the paper cut Nova coat, which is quite sort of oversized and it's lined as well. And then the green line Tamarack. And then the Fibre Mood Molly, which is quite similar to the Tamarack, but it's the Molly's got a dropped sleeve rather than more like a set in one. And then in terms of gilets or like a sort of body warmer, there's a few options there as well. So the I Am Patterns Hathor is a nice one. And then there is the Fibre Mood Irma body warmer, which looks quite nice. It has has like a bit of a bit that sort of sticks out at the side.
but I think you could admit that if it was like kind of a bit too sticky out at the shoulders. And then there's also the cashmere one, which is the Marco pattern vest, which I which I believe is also part of their like subscription thing that you do. But most of the time, from what I can tell with these subscription things, is that you can just join and then cancel at any time. So if there's like one specific pattern that you want, you can just join and get it, and then you don't you know you don't have to continue to subscribe if you didn't want to do that. So I did want to show you something that I have made that is not the Hovea, but it is using this type of fabric. And I kind of made it a bit as like a project for myself, really. Um, I wasn't actually going to share it because it was just like a sort of niche thing that I wanted myself. But now we've got all of these other colours. I think I want to show you just to give you some inspiration. The fabric is the same in the both sides. Yeah, it's exactly the same. So it means that there's not really a right and wrong side. And you can make things that are unlined because it is like it's just lined already. So I have made a coat. Um, a jacket using the khaki version of it and it is the green line tamarack but I got <coughs> excuse me but I got the hood expansion pack so that I could add a hood onto it and then I also lengthened it as well so I wanted a coat that was long as in like down to my knees and that was also lined with the shirling fabric as well so I have lined the whole thing with shirling and um, I'm going to put it on for you so you can kind of see what it looks like if I can sort of stand back then hopefully you can see more of it so I literally just used the shortening length and lines that are on the pattern and I just extended it straight down I think it was maybe about 12 inches off the top of my head so I didn't check that before and then I put patch pockets on the front which are actually the patch pockets from the Friday Pattern Company Elfer, so they're sort of angled a little bit. I just decided to make up my own thing there. And it is fully lined with the, the, the Teddy Sherling fabric. So what I did to do that was I cut out the outer fabric, I cut out the Sherling, and then I hand stitched them together to make it like in the seam allowance, I hand basted it all the way around the edge for every piece. Literally the amount of hand sewing in this project was unbelievable. If you ever do anything like this, be aware that you're gonna to have to do lots of hand sewing. So I did that for all the pieces so that it was basically like one, and then I could just treat the the, the shirling lining in the outer as like one bit of fabric and then just construct it. So I did do that on the sleeves as well. It does make them quite bulky, so I sized up by one size, um, but it might be maybe you wanna size up by two sizes, depending on how much extra space that you want in it. So then I just made it, like I just followed the instructions, I made it, but then for all the seam allowances, I bound them with the binding that matches the fabric. So it does make it look really nice on the inside. Like if I turn it inside out, then you'll see where, you'll see what I did. So I just, like I've got it there and then the seam allowances are open, it's all on here all underneath here so I let like I stitch this on and then instead of stitching it down on the other side because it was quite thick and quite a lot of layers to go through I then hand stitched all the binding down as well you're probably going to think I am like a bit intense for doing that but I just like it just took my time with it it took me quite a few evenings I did it all and now I do love it and um, did you size up all over it yes I did and um, could you not machine base the outer fabric in the shirt but you could but I don't know I just felt like I had more control of doing it by hand and that there would be less slippage but I guess you could do if you wanted to um, and then I just added like a little sort of extra thing at the back so I just like literally cut out like a little sort of curved piece and then stitch that on to I think I'm I think I hand stitched this as well yeah I did um, and then made like a little bit of binding at the back here for my hanging loops we'll put that in just to give it like a little sort of different touch on the inside and then yeah the hood's like all the same as well so so yeah I mean I'm not going to be able to do like <laughs> like a tutorial or sort of like a kind of video on how I did it or anything I can just sort of share share my tips it was quite experimental and I had to like do quite a lot of working out as I went along um, but I think it was worth it I do totally love it and I am glad that I spent the time to do all the hand sewing it was very satisfying um, and it is really nice and warm it is definitely really nice and warm but you could make this without doing the whole Sherpa lining because the fabric is double-sided you know you wouldn't need to line it and um, so that is definitely also an option as well but yeah uh, now that I've seen all these other beautiful colours in, I'm like, oh, I want to make another jacket, even though I've just spent ages doing this one. But anyway, 
the perils of being an avid dressmaker and wanting to just basically make clothes constantly is the situation I find myself in. Okay, um, could you do a blog, pattern, tips, etc.? I probably couldn't do a blog because I, I literally like sort of made it up as I went along, but I could probably do like a post, maybe like an Instagram post and sort of list out some tips and like general things that I did. Um, okay, let's see, because some people were asking me questions there and I'm not sure that I caught them all. Um, let me just have a little look. How did you find the anorak snaps with the quilted fabric? Surprisingly, they were actually okay. Let me show you them. So I did a little practice on some and then, cause I have put, I have put anorak snaps on like quite thick, heavy fabric before and it's been fine. So I was like really curious to see, cause I know that you said you'd had problems with it, Helen, but I thought, not that I didn't believe you, but I just wanted to try out of curiosity. Um, so, but I actually found it okay. So I made a hole with some punch pliers first and then I used the vario pliers to put the snaps on and I just squeezed the life out of it to make sure that it really stuck. And I think it's been okay. It's been fine. Like I've worn the coat quite a lot and like buttoned it up and pulled it open and they've not popped off or anything. So I, th I think if you're using the vario pliers, you should be, we should be all right with it. Yeah, it seemed seemed fine for me anyway. Um, will you be selling the binding? Yes, we will. Please, could you show the reverse of the quilted fabrics? Um, I, I can show you the reverse. It looks exactly the same as the outside, but I can show you it. Um, it's just, it's, it's literally identical. Like you cannot tell the two apart. They're exactly the same. Um, a few people asking about that. What about the Ilford for quilted fabrics? Yeah, I think you could. The Ilford's quite oversized anyway, so I think... I think it should be fine for that. Um, what is your top and what pattern did you use? This is the Fibre Mood Tanita top um, using some of the Fabric Godmother Joni Viscose. Um, okay, so I think I've caught up, but if you did ask a question, I've missed it. Feel free to ask it again. Um, I wonder if having the shirling fabric helped the anorak snaps feel more sturdy. Maybe it just gave like more of them to like, like something more for them to grip onto. Potentially, yeah, I would say that's a possibility. Um, a lot of haute couture is hand-stitched indeed. In that case, that's what that jacket is. I'm telling you, I've never done so much hand-stitching in my life since that, actually, that's not true. I've not done so much hand-stitching since I did cross-stitch when I was a kid. Um, okay, so the other thing I just wanted to let you know is that we have had all of the Meat Milk Derby tensile jerseys back in again. So all the colours on that are back available again. It's just been so popular after we put it with the True by Zoe tank as a kit. Um, so, so yeah, just wanted to say that all of that is back. And we are, after various issues with deliveries, I won't bore you with that. We're getting two deliveries this week. One definitely, one hopefully by the end of the week, if not early next week, of like replaying fabrics of some popular stuff, mostly like some of the classic planes, jerseys and classic sweatshirtings and stuff. So that should be coming in soon as well. So you've been waiting for something, hopefully it'll be here soon. Can the fabric be used vertically or horizontally? Yeah, it can. It doesn't doesn't have any give or stretch in it at all. Um, so yeah, you definitely can. You could just like use the quilting in it as almost like a guide to your grain line in a way. Um, okay, so I'm going to get on to the questions that you've sent in beforehand and feel free to ask me as I'm chatting if anything else comes up and I'll try and keep up with them as well. So the first one was, I've just finished my Bobby Pinnifer kit using the denim fabric. It came together so beautifully, but I don't know how, I don't like how the buttonholes look. I felt this way on other projects as well. Is there, is there a cleaner way to sew buttonholes so the fabric inside the buttonhole doesn't shred so much? I used free trek and, and I've trimmed the fibers, but they still look messy. I mean, I think like trimming the fibers isn't as important. You can sort of see here on this buttonhole, which is on like a denim placket, you see I've trimmed more here than I have on here where some of the threads are like still a little bit loose. I suppose it, I mean, I doubt anybody else is going to notice. I would probably add to that too as well, is that it might be one of those things that you're really noticing, but actually it's like a, quite a small thing that doesn't really impact the over effect of the garment. So, so yeah, bear bear that in mind as well. But what you what you could try, I would try this on some scraps first, is that you could change the stitch length of like the little zigzag that that it does as it goes round. 
Um, so it just makes the stitches closer together and it's kind of just going to like bind the edge of the fabric a little bit more. So yeah, it would just be a case of like selecting the buttonhole foot on your machine, but then on the stitch length section, just decreasing that a bit so that the stitch length is shorter and therefore the stitches are closer together and it makes the fab the thread that's making the buttonhole a bit more dense and that's going to really like bind the edges a little bit more. So I hope that that helps. Okay, somebody's asking about the courier issues resolved for the packages to the US. I'm very close to it. I've got a meeting tomorrow and I'm hoping that it is a successful meeting <laughs> and that I can resolve it. I, it is literally consuming my every working moment right now, trying to sort out our post, our international postage situation, which is like a whole kind of long, slightly boring story, which I won't bore you with, but I know it is important, but I'm, and I'm working really, really hard to fix it. So we should be able to sort it out. I'm really, really hoping in the next couple of days. I'm very, very sorry for all the delays. Yeah, one of those things. Um, is the meat milk fabric appropriate for the Nico or Dawson top, please? Yeah, I think it would be. It's really stretchy um, and both of those patterns are quite fitted and need stretchy fabric. So yeah, I think it would be good. Um, so nice to see your excitement for your project and not just helping us with ours. Your passion shot, shot through. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was a labour of love, but I, I am really pleased I did it. There was points where I was like, why am, why am I doing all the sand sewing? But you know, worth it in the end. Um, okay, so the next one was what kind of thread is recommended to use if I want to do top stitching on jeans in a bright colour, pink specifically? Um, okay, so I have got a few different options for you. Out of the more kind of classic, regular top stitching thread, which is this one here, there's three shades of pink that I've got, a 437, a 758 and a 382. So they are all the Gutterman sort of classic top stitching thread. Now it's quite thick. You would have to use regular thread in the bobbin with this one. And you do have to use a top stitch needle. And that is because the eye of this needle is thicker. So it's bigger. So it means that it can deal with the thickness of the thread. Like there's less resistance as the thread's passing through the eye of the needle. So then it helps make your tension and everything much more balanced. Now, the other top stitching thread that we do have is the, the Gutterman denim top stitching thread, but unfortunately it doesn't come in any pink. I think there's a maroon, but there's no bright pink colour, unfortunately, with that. The difference with this thread is a little bit thinner. You can use it in the bobbin if you want to, and you can use it with a regular denim needle or a size 90 would probably be fine as well. So then you don't need to sort of switch the machine needle you're using as well. So yeah, that's the difference with the top stitch threads there. Uh, Okay, so do you have any further thought for a cropped jacket from the boiled wool I bought from you? That is on my list for tonight and I will get to it shortly. Um, will the meat milk fabric be available year round? I want to make a couple of Zoe tanks, but I need to do some other projects first. Yes, um, it's been really popular. So I suspect we probably will just continue to stock it because I think it's a nice, it is a nice all year round fabric because it's really good for layering things in the winter but then you can definitely just wear it on its own in the summer and it would feel really lovely and cool as well would a chisel help with cutting buttonholes yes a chisel can help with cutting buttonholes but a chisel a chisel you would still need to like trim away excess threads with a chisel um either with the chisel or then with scissors afterwards but it will give like a really nice clean cut a chisel so yeah that's an option too um Okay, am I missing any suggestions for sources for loose wool or down for making coats and vests? Hmm, I'm not sure actually. Um, I wonder if it's almost like maybe maybe you need to look at like sort of felting websites or like people who do the, like needle felting and that would just give you some wool. I'm not sure. I've not really worked with that sort of thing before. Um, okay, so let's see what else is on here. Any tips on lining a sweatshirt? Possibly reversible. Can I use the leopard sequin fabric? So the leopard sequin fabric is this one here. And I wouldn't um, I wouldn't suggest that you make anything with this reversible because if you wore it the other way around, this is not going to feel nice next to your skin. But I think that you could make a sweatshirt out of this if only one part of it was this. So say, for example, it was the Green Line Linden and you did the front bodice out of this and then everything else was out of a sweatshirting fabric. I think that would work. Um, I think you would just need to be quite inventive 
and how you would line it because you wouldn't really want to feel the seam allowances of that on the inside. One option, of course, you could pick out all of the sequin. That might be quite painful because there's lots of little ones. The other option would be is to somehow, I guess you could somehow almost like, try. I'm trying to picture how it would come together. I wonder if you could kind of bag it out in a way with a lining. I would probably line it with something quite lightweight. We do normally do this tensile jersey in a black, which would be good to line that with. Um, so you could line it with that. So that sort of deals with using the sequin fabric as part of a, a part of like a jumper or a sweater project like the Brain Line Linden. Um, but in terms of generally making it reversible, I feel like with a sweatshirt, because you're because you never use like sweatshirt and fabrics quite thick anyway, I feel like it would be like maybe too heavy and bulky if you made it reversible. You'd probably want to I'm not sure, I don't know if, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I'm not sure if I would like personally do that. But I think if you really wanted to, what I would suggest that you do is not, not pick two fabrics that are too thick and heavy, like maybe pick one that's a bit lighter. Make two. And then you could, at the neckline, you could attach them, but you would have to almost put, you'd have to put the neckband on a bit like how you put the neckband on in the True Bias Zoe tank top which is almost a bit like how you put bias binding on in a way, you know, it's like, a, you know, say it's like a flat, um, a flat sort of strip of fabric and then you kind of fold the raw edges in towards the centre and then fold it in half and then like sandwich the two layers of that all together so that the bind so that the neckline would then kind of look the same no matter what way round you were wearing it. Um, but then, yeah, I'm just trying to think about the cuffs because you would probably, you would probably want to try and somehow do something the same with the cuffs as well and possibly the hem band. But then it would mean that your hem band and your cuffs and your neck band would have to go with both, ver both like sides of the fabric in that situation. I don't know if that's making any sense, but hopefully it gives you some things to think about. Um, has something has gone wrong with the live? Oh dear has it i'm sorry what's i'm not i can't really see anything here it seems to be fine for me i'm sorry if it's gone wrong for you let me know what the problem is and i'll try and do something to help um i love the leopard sequin what patterns would you recommend for it a skirt um i think you could make a skirt you definitely have to line it in something fairly stable i would say just to give it like a little bit more structure it's also got a little bit of given stretch in it so yeah i think I feel like for a skirt, you'd maybe want to somehow stabilise it a bit um, and just do something quite simple, maybe like the Silver Eve or something like that. When I make buttonholes, I put free stop on them and then leave them for a while to dry and then cut them and it keeps them from fraying. Great tip. Thanks for sharing. I missed the answer. Does the new fabric come with matching binding? It does. Yes. Um, okay, so let's see, where did I get up to? The live is okay for me, it's okay for me. Okay, I'm glad that it's okay. Good, good, good. I'm glad it's okay for everybody. I'm sorry if like a little blip happened for anyone else. I just came out and back in again. Okay, well, I'm glad that people are still here. It's telling me that people are still here, so that's a good sign. Okay, the next one was, do you have any sliders and rings for the making backpack please i just finished my kit and um, yes we do we've got three different widths depending on what binding you go for so just like for general bag making we've got 25 millimeter and 38 and 32 and we've got the rectangular rings and the sliders on all of them so yes is the answer to that the next one is, do I need to find the grain and woven interfacing before cutting it out? I tried to do it for the making backpack. So I've got some woven interfacing here. And what you will notice on the woven interfacing is it doesn't really have what looks like a regular selvage. It's just got like a cut edge. And I would just use that as the selvage. So as you place things on, square them up to this. You could measure from this if you're cutting out a piece that isn't a square or a rectangle. And then, then yeah, the other thing that you could do if, you've, if you're like finding it hard to get the grain line is see if you sort of, let me get it the right way around, see if you just place it on a bit of white paper like that and look really closely, you'll see the threads of the fabric as well, like the, 
the, the sort of up and down and side to side direction of the threads and then that'll kind of help you to get the green line as well so so yeah as best if you can as close as possible get the green line of it okay the next one is is it worth doing a course slash book and making my own bodice block? So I feel like this one's quite open to discussion, personal feelings and preferences. And some of you might have had experience with this before. So maybe you want to share any sort of tips or feelings that you have. But I was having a think about it. And I think probably one of the, bear, the main things to bear in mind, if you're considering like making your own bodice block and then kind of working with that and everything is that I think you really need to enjoy that quite sort of technical, mathematical, visualisation side of things. You know, you really need to, you really need to enjoy that part of the process because it does take longer because you, you would get your block, you know, you do your bodice block, you get it to fit but then to actually then make that block into a style or like a different garment then takes further work, further amendments, further twirling, further practicing. And I think you would need to, again, enjoy all of that side of it and that process to then get something that, you know, is very, very exactly what you want. The other option is that if you feel like you've got quite common fitting issues or that sewing patterns aren't really aren't really kind of fitting you as much as that and you and you find it maybe a little bit you don't really enjoy that process of like drawing it all out and calculating it and all of that sort of stuff then it might be it might be time better spent in just learning how to adapt patterns that already exist because then you can find the style of pattern that you want, the type of garment that you want, the dress, the top, whatever the cut, the fit of that is, and then just work on making that thing that already exists fit, fits you, which can be, you know, that can take time as well. There can be trial and error there too. You need to make twirls, etc. obviously depending on all the variables. Um, so so yeah i would just sort of weigh that up and um, somebody's saying i made my own bodice block and never used it i think that's really common that that happens and um, the best tips for the making backpack more rigid i'm making more but would like them less floppy this time so you could see if you join the facebook group there are somebody on there that has mentioned using a foam in one in their making backpack so they would maybe be able to tell you specifically what sort of foam they use but you could do that to make it more rigid i've done a few courses doing blocks and enjoyed it so much but i've never used them since i went to a class with leila to do a bodice block and loved it so pleased with the fit of the finished garment based on a block i doing a course now on pattern making and i love it do you have to use woven interfacing on woven fabric not all the time no um, it is a little bit heavier and thicker, so if it's a very lightweight woven fabric, then I would suggest using a, a lighter weight interfacing, which is typically non-woven. Um, okay, yeah, so a, f so a few people saying that they have made blocks but then not used them. So, so yeah, I think that's just sort of part, I think that should sort of be part of your consideration. Okay, the next one was, how do you finish overlocker tails? If it is a seam that is then going to get enclosed in something else later, then I don't finish them off. Like I literally just cut them. If it's something, if it's like a tail that's then just going to sort of be left, then I will usually make sure that the tail is long and I'll get a wool needle or you could get a bodkin as well and then just thread the overlocker chain through the large eye of that and then just sort of scoop it back through your the chain of your overlocking stitches and that sort of catches in. So that's what I do. Tips on neatening the insides of a baby gathered dress without an overlocker. I would probably suggest here that putting bias binding on it is your best bet. That's going to be the, so the, the, the easiest way to make it sort of soft. You could either hand stitch that on or stitch it on by machine. How do you make a hem even when you're on your own? I find mine are never straight. There's two routes you can go down here. One of them is you could stand in the mirror and look at yourself and be like, mm, it looks a bit longer at this side. I'll maybe just like, you could you could press it up a little bit and pin it and try it on again, check it, see how it looks before you commit to actually cutting it off. The more precise way is that you need to buy a hem marker and that's like a little stick 
on a tripod thing, like three little legs typically, a stick that's got measurements on it and a little thing that sort of goes up and down that's got a chalk pot that is connected to a wire with a little puffer on it. And what you do is adjust the height of that little block that's got that little thing that's got the loose chalk in it to wherever you want your hem to be plus this plus the hem allowance and then you squeeze the little put you look in the mirror and then you squeeze the little puffer and then you turn round as you're squeezing the little puffer and it shoots out a line of chalk all the way around then you can use that to cut it off and do it so otherwise you need to find a friend so they're, they're the options there and um, okay quite a few suggestions for the bag making the bag a little bit stiffer nodo from empress mills for a backpack bozo i use dev decoville light or decoville heavy to strength bags um okay so a few things to try there a few people using the bozo okay great thanks everyone okay the next one was i have some viscose jersey mix and I would like to know, have you got any tips on how to sew, wash and press? This will be my first time sewing with Jersey fabric. To be honest, I would say if it's your first time sewing with Jersey, it, it is a little bit trickier to sew with viscose Jersey because it's floppier and it moves around a little bit more. An easier Jersey to start with is either a French Terry, a loop back French Terry made out of cotton or just a regular cotton t-shirt weight fabric. They're a little bit more stable, they don't shift around quite as much, just easier to handle. So if it is your first time with Jersey, that would be my suggestion first, is practice with them. But when you do come to sew with, with stretch, stretch viscose Jersey, then I would say you just, you just need more pins, you just need to kind of take your time a little bit more, really make sure it's relaxed as you're sewing it, because it's much easier for it to stretch out. Um, and in terms of washing it, you can just wash it. Any viscose jersey that I had before, you can just chuck it in the washing machine, 30 degrees, normal cycle, try and dry it as flat as possible so it doesn't stretch out as, as it dries because that can then affect how you cut things out. So hopefully that gives you some pointers. Um, my dress dummy comes with a hem marker, which is excellent. Ah, that sounds good. Like a little bundle that you've got, great. Okay, so the next one was something that I had to look up, which I think is quite interesting. And it is quite technical, so I'm gonna try and like simplify it as much, um, as much as I can. So the question was, my dilemma is when the fabric is more of a two-way stretch than four. I've made my granddaughter leggings from school and to get the stretch going across the body, I had to fold up the length rather than selvage to selvage and this made the Vs on the knit fabric go horizontally instead of vertically. Could you help me please? What am I doing wrong? For a start, you're not doing anything wrong. If you, you know, if you're making something really tight fitted like leggings and your pattern requires a specific amount of stretch and you've got a fabric that you want to use for that project and the fabric is more stretchy one way than the other and you have to cut it out another way, then that doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's going to make the garment more successful if you're matching the amount of stretch in the fabric to what is in the pattern. But the reason it happens um, is to do with how the knit fabric is made. So from the research that I did and chatting to one of my suppliers who knits lots of jersey fabric, there's weft knitting and there's warp knitting. And I found this little picture that I've printed out for you. So here is weft knitting. So this is where the thread, you can see that it's going horizontally along. So this would be like the selvage here. So this is done with the yarns running in a crosswise or a circular direction. So this is quite often when they're made in a tube and then they just get cut and that's what makes them flat. So then that's why quite often on jersey fabrics, you don't have a selvage that looks like a regular selvage um, because it's just been knitted as a chip and then it's been cut and then that's what makes it flat. Um, and this, this is typically going to have a two-way stretch. Then this warp knitting here, so you can see that the thread is now going like vertically like this. So then this would be the selvage here and then this is going vertically like this. So this is where it's starting a little bit more technical. So this is a, the, the loop forming process in which the yarn is fed into the knitting zone. I'm gonna admit, I don't totally know what that means. It forms vertical loops in one course and then makes, and then moves diagonally to the next knit course. 
so the yarn sort of zigzag from side to side along the length of the fabric and you can kind of see here it's going like and then back on itself like this and it's going vertically up and down the fabric like this and um, so some people say that it's almost like it's a cross between a woven and a knit fabric and then this is usually what has four-way stretch so that's where it stretches like this and it stretches up and down as well now it's not unfortunately it's not quite as simple as just that because the other things that can affect it are the amount of elastane slash spandex that are in it as well and the percentage of that that is in a fabric can affect how much it stretches in either direction and the and what you always must remember is that the percentage the the fiber component of the stretchy fiber like the elastane or spandex say it's five percent eight percent whatever that doesn't correspond to the amount of physical stretch that the fabric has when we talk about percentage stretch of a fabric or like patterns reference the amount of st like the stretch that a fabric needs to have it's how much the fab it's not how much is is not what the fiber composition is it's how much it's physically stretching when you do that to it and um, and the the best way to measure that is if you mark out like a little 10 centimeter section so put two pins in that are 10 centimeters apart line up your measuring tape ruler whatever that you've got that's like your measuring thing for measuring 10 centimeters hold one end and stretch the other end and see where it stretches to and if it stretches to 13 centimeters 30 percent stretch if it stretches to 15 centimeters 50 percent stretch and so on um, and you can do that in either direction of the fabric so if it's a two-way stretch it'll only stretch in one direction like this so that's two ways like or like that and then it's if a four-way stretch it'll stretch like this and it will also stretch up and down the way like that as well so i hope that that sort of kind of explains it a little bit Um, i know it's not a t totally straight answer but honestly it, in, in relation to the question that you asked you're not doing anything wrong you just you're just working your way out around the particular fabric that you had for the project that you were doing. Okay, I'm gonna whiz through, I can't believe time's passed so quickly again. I'm gonna whiz through the other questions that were more like pattern and fabric combinations and recommendations. So the next one was, would a medium cotton jersey be okay for the Xanthi style arc dress? I had a quick look at this and I wanna say no, because it's got a collar and quite a lot of pin tucks in it. And I'm not sure that they're really going to work with a cotton jersey stretchy one. I think that you need a woven fabric, something that's stable. Something like a, like a viscose or a rayon is going to look nice in it because it will be like very swishy, but more challenging to sew. Or something like a cotton lawn or a poplin is going to be easier to sew, but it will sort of hold its fullness a little bit more. Okay, the next one was, please could you show some fabrics you would recommend for a men's shirt for a hot climate? So I would definitely go with something natural here, natural fibres, cotton, linen, um, lyocell, tensile, they're all good fibres that are going to be nice and breathable. I've got a few different options for you here that I bought over that, um, why have I not got the tag for this one? Oh, I'm sorry everyone, the tag must have fallen off. This is 100% cotton and it is like a chambray in the sense that one of the threads is blue and the other one's white, so it's sort of got like a two-tone appearance and then this little nice little pattern sort of printed on it. It's quite crisp, I think that would look really nice in a shirt. And then this one here is a little bit more sort of floppy. Um, but nice and lightweight, um, nice, nice and light for the summer as well. And this is the pale chambray lyocell fabric. It's eleven twenty a meter, and it's a hundred percent lyocell. So this is um very similar to like viscose and rayon and that sort of thing. And then this nice pinstriped one here as well. This is the indigo midstripe linen cotton fabric. It's 1320 a meter um, and it's 55 linen and 45 cotton. And again, this is gonna be nice for a shirt because it will press really well and just like look really smart and sort of crisp, but nice, nice fabric for the summer too. And then the other option, if you want something that's more plain is the Serona linen viscose fabric is also really nice, very lightweight. Um, and very comfortable. It's got the Serona fibre naturally has a bit of stretch, so it means that the fibres, the fabric's got a bit of give in it, which makes it really comfortable to wear. And it comes in lots of plain colours as well. So this particular one is the white Serona linen viscose fabric, and it's eighteen ninety a meter. Um, I miss what fabric you are wearing and wearing is and from where. So this is the fabric godmother 
Joni floral stripe. It's in, it's in a viscose print. We've got some online. So if you just search Joni on the website, you'll find it. And the pattern is the Fibre Mood Tanita. Um, I started my Zoe today, but I had problems with the stretch fix. It didn't glue. I wonder if your iron was hot enough. Um, that's maybe why it didn't sort of stick down. Sometimes that happens to me too. Okay, the next one was patterns for a loosish fit tee that are size inclusive. So the Cashmere Concord is one. So that's if, because it's a Cashmere pattern, it's got all the different cup sizes in it as well. And then the other one that's really nice, I've made one of this before as well, is the, is the Closet Core Core Tee, which is actually a free pattern. And it comes in a US 0 to 20, which is a B cup, and US 14 to 32, which is a D cup. And then the next one is I'd love to make the Wilder gown. That's the Friday Pattern Company one that's got a little opening and sort of quite high gathered neck with like a tie, raglan sleeves, and then tiers of skirts that are all gathered. So it's very sort of full and swishy. The buffet dress from uh, The Sewing Bee a few years ago. What fabric would you recommend? I definitely recommend like a viscose or a rayon or, but you know, something like that. It's very sort of floppy and swishy. The few that I picked out and brought over were, was one was this one. And um, where did the other one go as well? No, actually, you could make it out of this. I'd actually pulled this over for another question, but you could make it out of this as well. Um, this is the Fabric Godmother Jude Green Viscose 12 fabric, and it's £16 a metre. And because it's a viscose 12, it's a little bit thicker, thicker and heavier, but it's still lovely and floppy and lightweight. Um, and then the other viscoses that I brought over were these two here. Um, this one is really lovely and would, would probably be a bit more like a summer one. Um, I don't know what is happening tonight, why all of the fabrics that I pick don't have tags on them. Um, I'm pretty sure that this is the spec navy speckled, navy speckled something. Um, it's a viscose fabric. Um, so if you look in the viscose section of the website, you'll find it, but it's really nice. A nice sort of small scale all over print. So you don't really need to worry about pattern placement or anything like that. Um, you could make the wilder gown in something like this, but obviously it's then a little bit more, you know, you're going to use more fabrics you might want to be more particular about where you're actually placing the pattern i don't believe it but this one honestly i'm like something's going on tonight that all of my fabric tags are missing this also comes in a really nice um more of like a kind of bluey colorway as well so it's kind of like little fans and it's just a plain wee viscose fabric it's really nice and soft would be lovely and floaty for the wilder guy so a few options there. Um, the next one was fabric for the closet core Pauline dress. There's a couple of options that you can go down with this pattern. This is it here, the Pauline. If you want, you can go either more structure and stability for sort of like volume and it kind of like really holding its shape, or you can go for something that's much more floppy and fluid. So this was what I had brought over <laughs> this one for. And um, this is the more kind of floppy fluid version, which is where it's gonna kind of swish around a little bit more. And then what I had brought over for the more structured version um, was you could use you could use this one, which is a stretch cotton twill. Um which is which is you know like a sort of medium weight cotton fabric it's got a little bit of giver stretch in it so it would make it nice and nice and comfortable but this is obviously definitely going to hold its shape a lot more you can see here that it's much more sort of like it just holds its shape it doesn't really like flop or move so it's just going to give a much more structured garment you could also go for like a rami or a linen which again will give you a little bit more structure this gorgeous one here is the petrol rami fabrics 1440 a meter and um, it's a beautiful color and it would yeah it's just going to hold its sort of shape and stiffness a little bit more the other option for a more sort of floppier one is the smooth drape tensile twill and um, this is the lapis colorway and it's 23 90 meters 100 so percent tensile it's a bit sort of thicker and heavier but you can see that it's floppy you can see it's kind of like moving around so then it's just going to swish like a little bit more and that that sort of style of the pauline and um, the flowery green jazzy fabric you've just shown would it be okay for summer trousers please yes i think it would be um okay the next one is what fabric for a coatigan not boiled wool but something more transitional my suggestion for this would be um we've got these viscose blend knits that are like double face they're reversible so one side it's one color and one side is the other. This is really similar to the fabric that we use to make the 
popular named Esme cardigan that was in our window display before. And I think these would be really nice for, it would probably feel quite cardigan-ish, um, like a cross between a cardigan and a coatigan, which again is probably like, what? well, that's sort of what, what was in the name, isn't it? A coatigan is a cross between a cardigan and a coat. Um, we've also got a black and beige one, and then this is like a really nice sort of shade, uh, sage colour, and then like a kind of beige on the back as well. Um, so they're really nice for a nice coatigan. And then the next one was patterns for a short jacket for boiled wool. So you could go for the styles that are like the Megan Nielsen Hovea. You could make the Tamarack out of it as well. And then I did find a few others that were like a little bit more specifically for boiled wool or the samples that had been made up for the patterns were in boiled wool. So the Vanessa Hansen Solvi jacket, S-O-L-V-I, is one um, and it just had like a sort of raw edge it kind of opened at the collar but you could see that it was just like the cut edge of the boils wool and then there's also a Tasuti one the Leon jacket L-Y-O-N so there's a few options there for the boiled wool if anybody else has made a short jacket and boiled wool let me know and I'll share it the next one was I've just ordered cotton jacquard any recommendations other than the Sunday dressing gown so this was a fabric that I was shared in my reel last week, which is this one here. It comes in lots of really nice colours. A nice sort of medium weight cotton, got this gorgeous texture in it as well. And this is the cornflower textured cotton jacquard fabric. It's 12 90 a metre. So my suggestions for that um, would be you could do the Megan Nielsen Darling Ranges, something a bit more simple, the Merchant and Mills Camber dress or top. Again, more sort of simple option, the closet core one. Another dress, that's the Avid Seamstress Raglan, which is just a sort of simple dress pattern. Um, not the core one, that's for another question. So a few suggestions there for that jacquard. Um, the next one was best material for a men's lightweight t-shirt for a beachside bar. So really, if it's a beachside bar, it's gonna be quite hot. Um, I'm presuming, hopefully it's a nice hot beach. And I would say, again, try and go with something with natural fibres. So cotton is going to be good. Um, or you could go something more jersey, which is um, which is more like a floppy jersey. So like a tensile, um, a tensile or viscose jersey. I did pull out a few that are cotton. Uh, one's bamboo, actually, sorry. This is the white bamboo jersey fabric. Bamboo is really nice and breathable and it's very wicking as well. So it's going to be really nice and, and cooling. Um, it, bamboo is like a little bit more floppy so just bear that in mind it's a little bit thinner um, but I think that would make a nice cool t-shirt and then I've also got a stripe as well which is a cotton jersey just like a nice sort of classic stripes 95% cotton 5% elastane so yeah I would I would ideally stick with regular sort of t-shirt weight cottons um, or if you wanted something more floppy and kind of not not quite as structured as the cotton jersey go for either bamboo or the tensile jersey. Um, okay, let's see. I think there's maybe a comment about boiled wool here. I made the Tasuti Leon jacket from your boiled wool. It was a new technique with lapped seams, but a really easy make that comes together quickly and looks great. Well, that's good. I'm in the process of making the elegy in viscose, but struggling with it stretching a little. Could you show a couple of suitable, less drapey pattern fabrics that could work? more stable fabrics um i think you so more stable fabrics are going to be like a like a printed linen viscose would be more stable or a cotton poplin would be more stable as well you just wouldn't get the swishiness in the skirt if it's the neckline that you're finding stretching out put forming tape interfacing we sell if you search forming tape interfacing on the on the website you'll find it put that on in place of the stay stitching like as soon as you've cut out and that oh, that will stop your neckline from stretching out and um, oh i recommended the zoe jacket by so la la patterns i just finished it it's in my story that's great um are you going to be having a ramadan sale um we don't know we don't usually do we we sort of have two main sales a year a summer one and a christmas one that's the kind of main um two sales that we do as a business each year and um, we don't do like black friday or anything um, okay, so the next one was, can you show some children's jersey with matching ribbing? So I've got, I ended up going a bit crazy and I've got quite, quite a few options here. Um, the, I wasn't also sure what, what 
whether you wanted like more pinky or bluey or kind of neutral so i've got options for all this is the dandelion on grey fleece back french terry fabric with the rose organic cotton tubular ribbing i made my daughter some pajamas out of this combo and it looks really good and then for a plain option i've got this one here and um, this is the muted sage cotton french terry and these are exactly the same so this is an exact match here of that ribbing then for something a little bit more neutral i've got these two ones here this is the muted gray doodle fox jersey fabric with the muted grey cotton tubular ribbing fabric. So that's more, the other ones were French terry, so a bit thicker. This is just like a regular sort of lighter t-shirt weight fabric with matching ribbing. And then the last one here, which is obviously a bit darker and more blue, is the marled denim dino roar jersey fabric, which is 1560, and the marled denim cotton tubular ribbing fabric which is 960 and um, let me show both of them together so that's that's those two there so lots of different combinations okay somebody's asking i love your cardi did you knit it i did yeah it's this it's the sophie b cardigan um i knitted it ages ago now and it was actually a lot smaller than this when i first knitted it and it's grown it's got longer and the sleeves are really long now um, but i love it i wear it all the time um okay the next one was try and finish these off because I would always pass it so quick. Would a Liberty tan alone work for the Zadie jumpsuit? I think it would depend on what, what colour the print was. If it was a darker colourway like this, I think you probably could get away with it. It's going to feel lightweight and quite thin, so maybe more like a summer version. Um, whereas if you make it, you know, if you had a Liberty print that was like very light in colour like this, I think you'd probably feel like it was too see-through. And I don't think it, it would it would sort of feel good just like a trouser thing if it's unlined. But yeah, th I think you'd, as a very sort of lightweight summer version, I think you'd probably just about get away and um, get away with it with a darker print. OK, the next one was pattern for a coat with lapels and a collar, which would look good made from cotton twill, not a shacket. I would say this would be perfect for that. I actually really love this coat and I will one day make one when I get around to justifying another coat or jacket in my life. Um, I've got you, yours is on my list, Jessica. I'm, I'm almost there. I've got your fabrics out. Okay, the next one was a wide leg trouser pattern for a beginner slash intermediate no overlocker and fabric maybe with a pleat. So I would say that this... Flint, this flint pattern is perfect. It's really easy. It doesn't have a zip or anything. It's like a really sort of clever kind of secret closure that's either a tie or some buttons. And then it's got little pleats at the front, nice wide leg, you can obviously make a shorts version as well. This looks really good in linen or enzyme linen fabric. I've made a version out of that, that before and it works really well and it was nice and easy to work with as well. So the enzyme linen comes in lots of different colours where uh, we do have quite a few colours in stock, um, but we have got more on the way as well. And then do you have a pinifer pattern suggestion? The Jennifer Lauren Peppy pinifer, the Nina Lee Camden a little bit more fitted you can also make a skirt version of that and the helen's closet york pinifer is a bit more of like a looser style so it depends kind of what what style you want to go for um okay i saw some fabrics on your website midnight blooms cotton poplin and raspberry viscose linen do they look nice together so this is them here so this one is the midnight blooms cotton poplin it's 990 a meter and I was, it's not really that thick and heavy. I would say for a poplin, it's sort of maybe like on the lighter side of a poplin. And then that's the raspberry viscose linen. This is a beautiful fabric, very versatile. I love it for so many things. I do think they look nice together. Yeah, I think that would, that would work as a nice little outfit. And then the last one that I've got on here, and then I'll finish catching up on your questions here. So if you've got, if you've got any more, feel free to ask them now. Can you recommend a vest type top for woven fabric or another scrap busting pattern to use up fabric left over from other fabrics? I use the Zoe tank for stretchy fabric. The, the True Bikes Ogden Cami is a classic. I've made loads of them. It's such a good pattern for the summer and you can make it in loads of different fabrics. I've made it in lawn, double gauze. You could do, make it in a viscose linen, a viscose, um, like a regular woven viscose, lots of different options. The Grainline Willow is another one, which has got wider sleeves and is just more like a kind of classic sort of A-line top. 
And then there's also the cashmere at Springfield, which is quite similar to the willow, but it had it's got options. I think it might have slits at the side and it's got a, a panel at the bottom, um, which is good for scrap busting. You can maybe combine a couple of fabrics there. So a few options. Um, I'm making a pair of flints whilst watching, but challenging myself with a faux, ve with faux vegan leather. Ooh, that sounds exciting. I've just got that raspberry linen. It's really nice. I will give you a word of warning about the viscose linen is that we do have quite a bit in stock just now and we have ordered some for that to try and cover the summer season. But that line of fabrics from our supplier that we have literally been selling it, like I couldn't get enough of it last summer, they're discontinuing it. I literally almost cried when they told me that they were discontinuing it. We were like, how much have you got left? We want to buy it all. So we do have some and more is coming for the summer. So it's not a complete emergency. But if you like that fabric, don't delay on making sure you get some because yeah, it's once it's gone, it's gone, unfortunately. Um, the Nina Lee Fleet Top is great for scrap busting too. Good to know, thank you. Um, okay, so I think I've caught up with everything there. Thanks for watching everyone. Another hour is completely flown past. I can't believe I have been talking non-stop again for an hour. I was desperate for a cup of tea, but I was more than happy to help. Thanks for all your questions um, beforehand and afterwards. If there's anything that I've missed or you want to ask me for next time, then feel free to send me them. You can leave, a, if you're watching it back, you can leave a comment on here. You can watch it back on YouTube as well. I'll try and get that up in the morning so that you could watch it back on there too. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next week and hopefully have some more new nice things to show you. And also a little bit of a pre-warning is next, because I'll remind you again next Monday, but next Wednesday, there'll be the Mid-Month Sewing Society newsletter going out and there's some exciting news in that, which you might want to watch out for. But yeah, I'll give you more hints on that next Monday. So enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. I hope you have a lovely week and I hope you get lots of sewing done. Um, and yeah, thank you for your thanks. Thanks for all your messages. And I will see you soon.